you guys have one of these. This, um, I did a wheat for hay trial this past year. Very simple stuff. Um, not too awful scientific, but on a five acre field, I did plant seven different varieties of wheat uh, to use for hay. Mid-October, in fact, it was October, October 24th. Okay, not so mid, later October. Um, I went out and collected my soil samples. I divided the five acres up into four blocks, and I took 10 samples from each of those, mixed them all up, and sent those to the lab. Stroke of luck, like I got super lucky. And out of all of those four that I sent in, uh, no P in lime was needed. So I got very lucky on that one. Um, again, it was a five acre plot. I drilled wheat in at 10 in 10 inch rows. It was behind soybeans. It was a no-till field. And did all that on October 30th. Four rows, the length of the field, of each of the seven varieties. Um, and then in the spring, 1st of April, I put 60 units of in on it. Then May 16th, whenever it hit the boot stage, which is Feeks 10, I collected eight samples from each of the varieties, set them out or set them aside out in the sun for a week to cure. And I think the hardest part of that was keeping the dogs away from it uh, so that they didn't mess with it. And then sent it to the lab to get tested for moisture, crude protein, crude fiber, and your total digestible nutrients. And then right there, you guys see the results from that. I'll tell you going into it, uh, I just told, told Kevin this a while ago, that Dynagro 9552, if you were just to look at the field, and didn't know anything about it. Those four rows were the prettiest four rows of wheat I've ever seen. They were gorgeous. Um, tall, thick, lush, green as can be. It was fantastic. So I, going into it before I ever sent the samples to the lab, I thought that right there is our winner. That's going to be uh, the best wheat that I've got in the whole field. Which actually, if you look for as far as crude protein goes, it was. It did have the highest percentage of crude protein. Um, the, for your TDN, the two southern state brands, they uh, were quite a bit ahead of the others. Our Kenton and Hunker, I've got those from Jeff Rice from Rice Agri-Marketing. Uh, of course, the two southern states brand came from the Calhoun Southern States. And all, the three Dynagros came from CPS in Sacramento. Um, I'm hoping to re do this again, repeat it add a couple more varieties to it uh, this fall and do it again. Um, but I thought that was kind of interesting and it was a simple trial that I could do too, which I, I enjoyed. Uh, some of you guys may have driven by this field. I know Patrick probably drove by more than any of you and may not have known what was going on out there. So, but you guys can keep that. And that'll, this will be on uh, the website, on my website too, if you ever want to look back at it again. So. Uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about, very, well, maybe not so quickly, huh, is the drones. Or, wait a minute, not the drone, that's not the right term, that's where everybody calls them. Uh, the U, this is a UAS, not a UAV. There's like 1,400 different terms, and Curtis Dame has been good on trying to educate me, like, which one is which. Curtis does have a great presentation on all of this stuff, but I didn't want to get into all of that. Um, I just kind of want to talk about how you can use it, how I use it, and show you some of the pictures and videos that I've taken, uh, and then fly it, because that's what you guys probably want to see anyways. And I'll try not to wreck it like Curtis does either when he demonstrates. Um, I have had mine for about a month. This one right here is a Phantom, uh, Phantom 3, which I know probably doesn't mean a whole lot. It didn't to me. Again, Curtis was the one that said this was what I needed, so I just ordered it. Um, this particular one can go up to a mile away from me and up to 400 meters up. I, I don't like to do either of those. So, um, you can set the parameters. The first time I used it, it has a beginner's mode in it. And I only let it get 30 meters away and 30 meters up that first time I flew it. Since then, I'll go 120 up, and that's where I stop it. And um, I only let it get out of my sight from time to time. Wednesday, I let it get out of my sight a few times. I, can't, I did three flights Wednesday. Um, came out here to Freddy's, and we went that pasture that we were at earlier this morning. I did fly it back there. We got some video footage, took some aerial photos. 
and then went over to um, went over to the Vickers. Johnny, you may not have known that, but Russ did. <laughs> Flew it over um, a plot that I have out there, and then also took it to Mark Howard's on Wednesday because we're doing a cover crops plot this fall. So the reason I did that was to take aerial photos of the field that we're doing the test plot in and then send it to the specialist that I'm working with. And he loved that because he kind of had a visual of what we were going to talk about next week to plan out our test plots. Um, that's a couple of different ways that I've used it. I've flown it at home, too. Um, Sean probably teases me the most about driving by and seeing the herd over on the hill. Those of you that have been out to our place, you know, Schultz Hill, it's so far away from the house. And I can't see the cattle from the house. So, I flew this over the other night to check on everybody. Make sure everybody was still there and doing okay. Uh, the calf was the only one that was okay with it. The cows and the bull wanted no part of it. Uh, but when we flew it here Wednesday, they didn't mind it whatsoever. And I got a lot closer to Freddy's uh, than I did mine. So... It's fun to take pictures with, just kind of see things. I'm not doing anything illegal with it, I'm not flying over people's houses or anything like that. So, um, some of these, depending on what your uses are, you do have to have a license for it. Mine is just under the kind of hobby umbrella. I'm not using it to make any money off of, I'm not using it to um, make any production decisions with it. So just kind of using it to, uh, to help, like I said, plan out some plots, do some visuals to fly over the test plots the other day. That, that was a great tool that I was glad that I had to do that so I didn't have to get out in the Milo because you guys know I didn't really feel like itching for the next two weeks. Um, so that helped out quite a bit. This is run by this little device right here. Um, I was one of those kids that never played video games growing up. So the first time I'd seen this, it literally scared me to death because I, I was like, I don't know, I, eh, no, I can't do this. Um, but it, I found out it's not that hard, really. I have an app on my phone that this camera right here, whatever this camera sees, it comes up on my phone. And it has made it a thousand times easier to do. So, it just mounts, if I can do it without breaking my phone. The only bad thing is, you have to take that otter box off, and that scares me. I think I'm going to drop my phone and break it, but I think I, it's easier to drop the phone and break than crash that and break. So, I have pretty much a bird's eye view the entire time that I'm flying this, which is great. I've got to learn to watch this, because at first when I flew it, I was watching this instead. And when this thing turns, so if I'm flying it straight and then I decide to go this way, it jacks the controllers all up. So it's completely different then. When you turn around to come back, all the controllers are completely backwards then. So it's a lot easier just to watch it uh, through my phone. I can take videos, can take pictures through it, uh, and then they automatically, they download onto my phone. And then this also has a SIM card in it as well. That once I'm finished, I can take this SIM card out. And it's just like kind of the ones like in your phone and your camera is at home. Put this little guy into my computer and it will download them all to my computer as well. Which I have all the flights that um, I have done so far. They are downloaded on my laptop. Which I know you guys can't see my laptop, but um, you're more than welcome to look at them if you want to. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can just look at it, like come by later or something. So the cost, and these do cost here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. Under technology? So. Yeah, I'll bet they will. You guys may be right. They may, I'm going to, I'm not going to, it's the video's recording. I'm not going to say right now. I don't want to be wrong. How expensive are those things, Excellent question, Tim. This right here. Again, this one right here is this just came out. They've done all these upgrades. So this is the um, Phantom 3 Professional. Because they have a regular one, then they have the Professional. This, with the camera already on it, uh, two sets of the blades. I did get an extra set of blades. This is the upgraded controller. Um, 
I've got an extra battery, and back there I have a hard shell backpack to keep it in as well. All of it costs fifteen hundred dollars. So they're not not a cheap toy or not a cheap tool. Let me rephrase that by any means. Um, so it's I'm extra cautious with it then, but. In the long run, I think if you use it the correct way, uh, you will see the benefits and, and you'll enjoy it more than anything. Um, they have, they can range anywhere though from a couple hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. It just kind of depends on what you want. Uh, I did want a little bit nicer one instead of, you know, just getting a couple hundred dollar one. So that way, because I knew I wouldn't be happy with it. Uh, there are a couple things about this one. These little nuts that keep the camera on, if you were to wreck it, they are kind of cheaply made. That, that part's plastic. So, um, Curtis and I made it real nice and fancy and put some red ties on it. So that way it doesn't fall off in case those do break if you crash it. Um, another reason I chose this one is because it has these legs right here to kind of protect the camera in case of a, a wreck. That one, I guess it's about medium weight. Uh, it's not the lightest thing in the world, but if any of you all were at Princeton at the corn tobacco and soybean field day, that guy had like this massive one that was huge. And I couldn't imagine how heavy that, that is trying to get up in the air. Uh, the, the other thing about the app with the phone it records all my coordinates so if I were to like crash it into a cornfield it gives me the coordinates and I can go find it which is great because that's a, I'm still a little scared to fly it over a cornfield no bean fields wouldn't be quite as bad um, and then also there's there's all kinds of stuff I haven't found out about it yet but you can pre uh, it's pre record a flight so it'll bring up like the map of where I'm at and you flight path, press a button, and it automatically will fly that path, and I don't have to do anything. Uh, it has auto takeoff and auto landing, which is very nice, especially like, if the wind picked up all of a sudden, it'll land itself still. Uh, it has a home button, so if it does get where I can't see it or the battery starts getting low, I hit the home button and it automatically comes back to me. Uh, it also has another feature on this one that if I just punch the little icon with the person, it's going to follow me wherever I walk. So, all kinds of neat little uh, gadgets and gazmos on this. Like I said, I'm still learning a lot about it, but uh, I have enjoyed it and it's been very useful. Like I said, probably the best thing about it so far was being able to take aerial photos and send them to the specialist. So that, that's come in handy quite a bit. Uh, but any questions? Of course, yeah, the wind the would pick up perfect. big time right when I do that. Great. <laughs> that wind will die down just a minute. We will. Um, let's see. I'm thinking maybe it'll. And if the wind does pick up or if flight conditions are not desirable, it tells me too. Uh, it'll say on the phone, not safe to fly. Um, Is that what it says now? I don't have it turned on yet, yeah. but there's light indicator lights on the bottom as well. So if the battery is starting to go low, or if uh, it loses GPS signal, then the red lights will start to flash. And if you can see it, you know to bring it back. What's the flight um, time on it? Okay. Twenty. Th these batteries have 20 minutes, and on the app on the phone, it has a timeline on there. And when it gets down to about six minutes. It starts to beep and it turns red and it tells you it's time to come home. So the battery life is starting to get low on it. Um, and I'm glad it gives six minutes. So the two black circles here on the bottom, that's all that's the, the indicator, like it measures how high up you are off the ground. Um, I, the other day I didn't auto land, by the way, and I landed in a nice pile of weeds. Um, but it, it didn't hurt it by any means. But it did color the uh, the blades a little bit, so now I, I know which says which when I pull them out. Uh, so they have a good color to them now. Um, 
trying to think what other features. Like I said, I'm still trying to learn a lot about it. What about trees, obstacles? Is it? I mean, you got to direct it around like yeah. a power line or something? Or um, the best thing to do is just not fly around power lines. So it does tell you to stay away from uh, like mar whenever you're taking off and landing. Stay away from power lines, large metal objects, anything with uh, any type of magnetic force as well. But that's mainly whenever you take off. Because it calibrates like that's your home. And I'm going to fight. That's your home point. So it doesn't want to interfere. I'm waiting for the wind to die down. So I keep talking. I know I am. I'm just stalling. Can so. you up in there and take it off like that? Do what? it up there and hit the button. Oh my gosh. safe it'll tell me I guess. And also you have to make sure you've got somewhere it's got a good GPS signal. If you're flight with that, if you're a flight manually, you don't have to worry about that. But I'm still not that good. I'm not gonna fly manually yet. I'm gonna use that GPS. So I am gonna go out here and start it as the home point. Um, when you start it up you do have to calibrate it each time so I'll have to spin it around a few times uh, and then then we'll get started. And I am going to video this, so make sure you smile. <laughs> <laughs>